Well, welcome to Thursday. Here's the question on the table this morning. What have you lost as a result of this quarantine? Might be a good idea just to make a list because we've all lost something. What have you lost during this quarantine? And it's okay to grieve what you've lost. And after you develop your list of what you've lost during this quarantine, might be a good idea to ask yourself the question, can I live with these losses? And I think that what we'll find is, yeah, we're doing okay. We can live with these losses. Doesn't mean that you don't wish for a better day. And it's okay to wish for a better day. But you know what? You're still kicking. You're still good. God is still in your life. And God, we know he's in your future. So what have you lost as a result of the quarantine? And then after you develop the list, can you live with those losses? Over and over, we have highlighted women as the first to be eyewitnesses to the resurrection. It's not by accident. It was purposeful that God intended for them to be the first recipients of the greatest message that has ever been conveyed to the world. I've argued that it's a result of their helper quality. The apostles needed the women's help to believe and to be more than they could ever be on their own. Now I want to observe the qualities of just one of these women. In John chapter 20, verse 1, it says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark, and she saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. Mary Magdalene. That Magdalene is not her last name. She is Mary. Where she is from is from a place called Magdala. That's why she's called Mary of Magdalene. She is from Magdala. Magdala is a little village that's just west of the Sea of Galilee, right there on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. Now, what we know in the count of chapter 20, really in verses 1 through 10, is that um, Mary had originally reacted that the body was stolen. But later, Jesus graciously appears to her. And so look at verse chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. So we pick it up about Mary in verse 11. And, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. She's thinking the body has been stolen. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. Verse 12, and behold, two angels, just like Luke had reported two angels, two angels in white were sitting there, one at the head, one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Verse 14, when she had said this, she turned around and behold, Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus is even appearing to her and she doesn't even know it's Jesus. Verse 15, Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? In verse 15, supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And then verse 16, this is beautiful. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren, say to them, I ascend to my father and your father and my God and your God. In verse 18, and Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he said these things to her. What a beautiful way for Jesus to reveal himself to her. Um, you know, think about what do we know about Mary of Magdala? This is what we know. Somehow, um, she was free to travel and follow Jesus in his journeys. In other words, she, had, she apparently had no sort of obligations to remain at home. That's why she was able to travel with Jesus. We know that she had a troubled past. Um, what do we know? Well, from Luke chapter 8, verse 2, that seven demons were cast out of her. Um, you know, I think... Mary of Magdala has gotten a bum rap over the years because I think some people have associated her as the harlot described in Luke 7 or the adulteress in John chapter 8, but it's unfair to assume that. We don't know if she was a harlot. We don't know if she's that woman in 
Luke 7 or John 8. There's no evidence of that. We do know that she's mentioned 14 times in the Gospels. So she had a prominent relationship with Jesus and the apostles. She was a true follower of God. Now think about this. The most celebrated, the most anticipated, the most predicted event in human history. And why would Jesus appear to her? A woman with a troubled past. A woman who had seven demons cast out of her. We already mentioned, I think, on Monday that, well, women weren't even allowed to be witnesses in a Jewish court. They weren't allowed to be witnesses in a Roman court. Why in the world the most anticipated, celebrated, predicted event in human history? And she becomes the first post-resurrection witness and thus becomes the first post-resurrection messenger. At the heart of it, this is what I think Jesus is communicating to us. Those who realize what they have been rescued from well, they're the most grateful, and the most grateful to God have the most profound impact. It's true, those who live out of an attitude of gratitude seem to be the ones who have the greatest impact for Jesus. You just kind of think, well, I got what I deserve, and thank you for saving me. Ho-hum, you'll live accordingly. But if you realize that God rescued us from a debt we could never get out of on our own, there's an there's an attitude that you live out of that is just steeped in gratitude. I think that was the characteristic of Mary of Magdala. So the question is, how grateful are you? Make a gratitude list. For those of you sitting around as a family, great idea. List the things, and I bet you you can't you can't you'll come up with an endless list of things, and you realize that. You can't outgive God. Live out of an attitude of gratitude, and it increases the possibilities that we will make an impact for Christ. Have a great Thursday. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Friday.